Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. And in this video, you saw the title, we're breaking down the iceberg of Skylanders. Now, I know this video series is kind of dead. You don't really see anyone breaking down iceberg videos anymore, but I saw that there was an iceberg for Skylanders, and I thought, let's explain the iceberg. And today, we have a special guest joining us, Crypt Crusher. Hey. What? Dude, we've been practicing this forever. Oh, all right, yeah. No, sorry. My bad. Let's go into it. Alright, let's start breaking down the Skylanders iceberg. Skylander boy and girl. Like I Spyro. We all know Spyro the Skylander, and in case you don't know, Spyro was not always a Skylander. He had his own game series made by Insomniac Games. Spyro was basically an instant hit and got two more games in his original series. The first three games being Spyro the Dragon, Spyro's Ripto's Rage, and Spyro Year of the Dragon. After this, Insomniac Games was done with Spyro, and they moved on to things like Ratchet and Clank. Then, after that, Spyro was given to different developers basically every single time he got a new game. Spyro 4 eventually came out, and it was a total flop. End of the Dragonfly was super, super bad. Trust me, it was horrible. After that, Spyro got a fifth game, actually, which was Spyro's Heroes Tell, which was leaps and bounds ahead of Enter the Dragonfly, but it was still just okay at best. That's how bad Enter the Dragonfly was. Then Spyro got rebooted for a Spyro trilogy called The Legend of Spyro Games. It's got three games and it ended in 2008. So when Skylanders was made, they want to have a mascot to make people want to buy the game. And they chose Spyro. And then Spyro in 2018, he got a reignited trilogy game, which was a reboot of his first three games. It went over very well. And now there are rumors that Spyro will come back in 2021 with a new game. There are some other really obvious things at the tip of the iceberg, so I'm just going to blaze through them all. First of all, Activision. We know them as the publisher of the Skylanders games. Next up is the Portal of Power. We know this is the thing that transports the Skylanders from our world to Skylands. Toys to Life. The Skylanders games did not make this genre, but it's the first game that really made it popular. Definitely the most recognisable Toys to Life video game. And of course, who could forget the main villain of Skylands, Chaos. And lastly, the starter pack, the magical box that gives you everything you need to play the game. The Core of Light. I mean, we all know what this is. The Core of Light is the thing that helps bring light to Skylands and keeps the darkness at bay. Well, until it got destroyed in Spyro's Adventure, and then destroyed again in Superchargers. That thing just cannot catch a break. The Portal Owners Pack. This is what you would buy if you already owned a portal that works with the game. The Portal Owners Pack gives you the game itself and one Skylander. But since I want all of the Star Pack Skylanders, I normally just go for the normal pack. Upgrade Paths Everyone knows about Upgrade Paths. You choose one over the other one and you don't get to choose the other one unless you reset it. The Skylander. There's no need to go into further detail about this. Series 2s Again, we know about Series 2, Zero Reposes, no need to go into further details about this. The Giants were the first Skylanders. I am pretty sure everyone knows this, but in case you don't, the Giants were indeed the first Skylanders. Uh, the original 8 Skylanders. I mean, technically there could have been 10 if they had dark and light elements, but because in the Skylanders lore it says the dark and light elements were taken out of Skylanders when the core exploded, uh, I get more into subject about this in a video uploaded on Wednesday. The Giants even get referenced in Spyro's Adventure as the Elder Elementals, which means probably Activision had plans to make Skylanders Giants even before SSA. Skylanders Academy. I really don't know why the Redditor made this in, not into Layer 1, or even into Layer 2. I mean, it's in Layer 3. I don't know why it is, but Skylanders Academy is a Netflix show that ran for three seasons spanning from 2016 to 2018. This really should have been in layer 1 or 2, there's no reason to push it down this far. We Swap Force Graphics. This one, I know is a joke, but as a person who played Swap Force on the Wii, it shouldn't be a joke. I can say with 100% certainty, this game's graphics are horrible on the Wii. It looks so good on 360, Xbox One, all that. But on the Wii, it literally looks like Play-Doh. You should, you should buy a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360 before you even consider buying it for your Wii. It's that bad. Don't play Swap Force on the Wii, I am begging you. The Ancients. 
These guys are magical beings, far more powerful than the Skylanders. In fact, they're basically gods, since they're the people that actually made the Skylands. Sadly, we only ever see one ancient, that being the brain. But the brain does mention the ancients as others sometimes in the Skylanders Imaginator story. The brain also refers to himself as the last of the ancients, which means that either the other ancients just died off, or maybe they got in an argument with the brain and it didn't end off nicely. And also, just in case you're wondering, the four magical creatures at the beginning of Swap Force that replenish the magic in the volcano are not ancients, they're actually called the Elementals. Yeah, you know, all of this adds up, the brain is clearly a serial killer. I know that Crypt King is a fan favourite Skylander, but did you guys know that he was supposed to be a giant? And not only that, but he was supposed to be a magic element as well. Yeah, that's right, my boy Crypt King was supposed to be playable in giants, and you can even see that he had a different colour back then, and it still looks awesome. Like sure, Ninjini's fine and all, but I really wish that Crypt King was able to be played in this game, because then I could also play as him in Swap Force. Oh, it would have been just so epic. Okay, <laughs> this is interesting. Pop Fizz and Trigger Happy are the same character. I have no idea where this came from. I've been searching for anything about this and nothing came up. I'm guessing some crazy redditor just made it up on the spot. All I can say is that Pop Fizz and Trigger Happy are both gremlins and kind of have the same body shape. But besides that, nothing else matches up. If you guys know anything, please tell me in the comments. I am just so desperate to know what the hell this is about. The Rift Engines. Rift Engines are powerful magical artifacts and Skylander Superchargers. The Superchargers notably stand on the elemental Rift Engines in their toy forms and use them to power their vehicles. And a silver Rift Engine is embedded on the front of the new portal of power which was in Superchargers. Their most significant ability is to create rifts to go to other worlds. The Rift Engines were actually made by the Ancients to travel to different worlds to spread the light. PvP, we all know what this is. This was something that was in the original three games of Skylanders, and sadly, they got rid of it. I really don't know why either. The PvP was a great thing to do. You could battle your friends. It was so much fun, and sadly, we'll never be able to see what PvP would be like in Imaginators, Trap Team, or Superchargers. The Lost Skylanders. Again, this is another one where I looked up and found nothing. I even looked on the Skylanders wiki, guys. Still nothing. Underneath it, it says the Lost Skylanders. It says Skylanders at from the end of the Archeans to the start of SSA. So I'm just gonna take a guess and say that this means Skylanders that came before the giant, I and mean, they came after the giants to destroy the Archeans, but didn't were were not there in SSA. The Skylanders we never hear about in Skylanders, uh, or that somehow died before SSA. Uh, it never really talks about. I ne never really talked about how a Sky if a Skylander can die or if they just retire, but these are the Skylanders that were never mentioned. Eon does mention Skylanders, like, as in, like, the older Skylanders and stuff like that, but they're not an SSA, we don't know who they are, he mentions them sometimes in Story Scrolls. It would've been cool if they actually made a game called Skylanders, The Lost Skylanders, something like that. Uh, but that's really all good I can think about on the subject. Sheep Gods. This is another joke, probably. But I did find a website called Skylanders and the Bible, and I could not be bothered to read that. It probably mentions it in somewhere about the sheep gods. I, I don't know. I know that there are sheep statues in some of the Skylanders mobile games, though. I do know that. Okay, now we're getting into the big brain stuff. Flynn's daddy. We really don't have any clue to who Flynn's father is. It is a big mystery. The only little hint that they give us is that Flynn's dad was supposed to have helped train the trap team. When you think about it, this could mean that Buzz could be his father. First of all, Buzz and Flynn do somewhat look similar and they both have a stupid catchphrase. Flynn says boom and Buzz says boom sticks. They both also love enchiladas and they both kind of act similar too. Sadly, Buzz was only seen in Trap Team and Superchargers. Maybe if he was in all of the games like Flynn, then we'd have more evidence. 
Humans colonized Skyland. This is another one that I couldn't find anything of. Maybe it was just a theory that some weird Redditor made up. I'm guessing that it's a theory though, and the theory is after Ring of Heroes, more and more humans came to Skyland and colonized it just like humans do. And after that, they took control of the Skylanders. This is one I really don't know about. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense, but I could not find anything on the subject, so yeah. Bowser and Donkey Kong are the only locked console characters. Have no idea why this is down this far. This should have been in layer 1 or layer 2. I thought this was pretty common knowledge right now that you can only play with Donkey Kong and Bowser on Nintendo consoles. There's really no one, there's no reason for this one to even be this low. It should have been higher. Original Skylanders Price. I'm pretty sure the original Skylanders price on SSA was actually like 14 bucks, but then when the holiday seasons came, they lowered it down to 10 bucks. And way more people bought the Skylanders, so they they just kept it down to 10 bucks. I'm really glad they did this. The Core of Light Interior. Uh, I don't really know what this one has to do with anything. I mean, we do see the Core of Light Interior in SSA during the cutscenes. I, I really don't know why this one is here. I, like, I don't really understand why this is even on the iceberg to begin with. Now, something we don't see, though, is the interior of the Supercharger's Core of Light. And it's kind of weird because when it is ripped out of the ground... Uh, it does look like it's just mostly tech inside of it instead of what was in the SSA one. Uh, I really don't know why this thing is even on the iceberg, but there you go. Skylander 7. Not everyone knows this, but there was actually supposed to be a Skylander 7. And it was actually planned. Well, not really Skylander 7, it would have been an Imaginators 2. Basically, just a huge expansion pack for Imaginators, giving the game new senseis, new Imaginate crystals, new battle classes, new levels. I'll even put up a pictures of what supposedly uh, are some of the Skylanders that would have been in this game. They honestly look pretty dang cool. Series 5. At this point, there's going to be a lot of theories on the iceberg. This one is a bit weird. Skylanders Series 5. I'm guessing that people thought that maybe before they decided to have Superchargers have no cores, they were planning on making Series 5s. That's really all I can say about this theory. You can still play as Tarclops. In case you don't know, Tarclops, here's a picture of him. This is actually the prototype design of Zap. That's right, they got Zap out of Tarclops. Don't really know how that happened. But anyway, he got scrapped. Fun fact, Tarclops is actually the only Skylander out of the five original Skylanders that is the only one that does not appear in the game. You may ask what about the red Skylander, but this one is obviously the, desi the design that would later become Spyro. Some people say you can still play as Tarclops though. The most reasonable theory is that Toys for Bob or Vicarious Visions in their studios, there's a playable figure of Tarclops the, that works in the game. I can see this being true. Uh, they probably had to play with him in game to get a feel for him and why they scrapped him, right? So this theory actually has a leg to stand on. Here's even a supposedly leaked photo of Tarclops. It's really grindy the picture is so i would probably say the picture is fake but this theory does seem like it has some sort of truth behind it snapshot was supposed to be a giant's core this isn't a theory this is fact i'm willing to bet that a lot of the community knows that crypt king was supposed to be a giant but did you know snapshot was supposed to be a giant's core honestly i wish it snapshot got replaced i mean didn't get replaced uh because now we have chill i bet snapshot would have been a great skyline's core oh sorry i should be calling him by his giant's name bullseye Here's proof that Bullseye was going to be a giant's core. It looked like he got pretty far in development too. He had a figure, name, and a health bar too. I'm so sad that they scrapped him for chill. Bullseye would have been a great Skylander. Jetvac did 9-11. Uh, this one's a joke. I think we all know that. Minis come from a post-apocalyptic world. Like I said, a lot of theories down here in the last layer. I don't really see... Uh, what legs is there he has to stand on? I mean, I guess you could say that the, the Skylanders that survived the post-apocalyptic post world got mutated and turned into small figures and time travel back into the current Skylanders. However, this theory can't be true since the backstories of the minis, come fr they say they come from a miniverse and that they travel to Skyland, so this theory cannot be true. Skylanders 8. I really don't know what to say about this one if there's not even a Skylanders 7, so this theory has to be completely off the table because there's no Skyline 07. I looked up for a long time and I could not find anything for this. Skyliner ships. Really ready there? Come on, out of all the things you could have put in the bottom of the iceberg, it had to be this. 
for Riley. This is actually something very cool Activision did. A kid named Riley, his favorite Skylander was Zap. Sadly, he passed away from a rare form of cancer. So the people at Activision, Notorious for Bob, made him a, made a Series 2 WoW power name for Riley. This is just a really sweet gesture from Activision, and they totally did not have to do this, but they did anyway. Question mark, or mystery, was an element. Ah yes, another theory. Well, this one is pretty self-explanatory. As you can see in Trap Team, the light and dark elemental gates have a question mark on them, which could mean that Trap Team was supposed to have this mystery element, but then it was split into dark and light. I can kinda understand this theory, but I don't see any way that it's true. First of all, it doesn't seem right that Activision would have an odd amount of elements. Maybe at the very beginning of Trap Team's production, the mystery element was going to have the light and dark combined, but no, I don't really see this. SSA prototypes. I'm guessing that this is just talking about all the prototypes that came before SSA. I'll show you some. As you can see, um, that's part of a scrap level. Haldor used to be originally Double Trouble, Sunburn's name was Hot Flash, and the Skylander used to have even more toyish designs. Really cool. Light and Dark Ele Eternal Sources. This one is a mystery. We all know that SSA has the eight eternal uh, sources, um, each element having their own eternal source. But light and, light and Dark do not have an eternal source. Maybe that is why the Core of Light never actually keeps the darkness gone for too long. Maybe they don't need eternal sources because the Dark and Light are the two main forces in Skylands, Dark being the force of evil and Light being the force of good. Cursed Tiki Temple is a metaphor. Here's a great theory. So the theory is that the level Cursed Tiki Temple is somewhat of an allegory. They say that this level is kind of supposed to be representing what Toys for Bob went through as a company working with Activision for Skylanders. The first thing is that the level is Tiki themed just like the Toys for Bob office. Also the main NPC is Bob the floating Tiki head. Toys for Bob and the main NPC is Bob. Kind of strange but it gets even better. Then when you get to the actual temple in this level Bob the Tiki Head says, whoever built this temple made it to honor the dragons, but the evil has taken over and honors nobody. This quote um, really makes the, th uh, the theory seem true. To honor the dragons may be referring to game one where Spyro was brought back and honored uh, the main star. The evil that possesses it honors nobody may be being Activision plans and the possessment may be the employees being laid off or the HQ being taken down bit by bit. Honors nobody part refers to the mindset of Activision. They honor no single creator or being only the profits that they make they honor nobody uh yeah so the series seems pretty true also the voodoo doll enemies may be referring to the actual toys and prototypes of the skylanders and the curse could be activision's layoffs plans and management for the franchise uh this theory has looks like it could be really true actually so yeah this theory is a pretty cool theory and it um it looks like it could be true War Drums is superior to Skyland Boy and Girl. I mean, he's not wrong, it's pretty obvious, but this is a joke. The Sky Eater Genocide. Wow, that sounds really scary, but it's true. This is scary stuff we're talking about. Think about the Death Star, but then put it in superchargers. Think of how many lives must have been lost to this massive machine. This does seem quite out of place in a kid's game, but you know, it did add a lot of cool story depth to Superchargers, so you know what, genocide is cool guys. Skylanders Battle Royale. I've heard people saying that making a Skylanders Battle Royale would be the best way to bring back Skylanders, and I heavily disagree with this. A Skylanders Battle Royale would just be such a different experience from Skylanders, it wouldn't even feel like a Skylanders game. Just imagine Skylanders having guns and going around on the map as they kill each other, and the darkness consumes them, and then you get the epic victory ro royale and you do a default dance on them. It just does not make any sense to be a Skylanders game. I hope a Skylanders Battle Royale never happens, unless it means that we get actually more actual real Skylanders games. Does the magical world of Skylands ever end? Does the Skylands ever stop? Or is it just infinite sky? Or maybe it's like our space and it's always expanding. There is one big piece of evidence that points towards Skylands being endless. Flynn never finds the edge of Skylands, and Flynn is the best pilot of all time. If he can't do it, nobody can. I think Skylands is just infinite sky. It would kinda make sense, like, what would the edge of Skylands even look like? 
there could possibly be a point where there's no floating islands or anything and it's just sky. And that's maybe what the barriers of Skylands are, and that does kind of add up to having a map, because if there was just infinite islands, that wouldn't make any sense. E3 figures. I'm pretty sure this is talking about the original E3 exclusive Trigger Happy, Gilgrunt, and Spyro. I tried to find them, but I couldn't find anyone selling them. I know that they existed though, and I saw one on eBay a couple months ago, I think, and it was around $1,000. So, I mean... Uh, you probably could find them somewhere, but they're just like the loose figures inside of the Skylanders box. Like, they're not even like in their tight, they're just loose, like, they can bounce around inside the box. So, if you want them, that's cool, but there really is no reason to get them. Imaginators was intentionally bad. I think we can all agree that Imaginators is lacking in a lot of quality. <clears throat> you know, it's uh, still better than Superchargers. I think they were running out of ideas for the series and just wanted to get one last game out to steal everybody's money before it was too late. Persephone is a millionaire. This one makes a lot of sense actually. All the money Persephone, Persephone has gotten, she's probably is actually a billionaire now, right? She has a pretty good gig, you know? You give money to me and I give you powers and she's probably rolling dough at this point. This theory definitely seems true. Skyliners and SW, really? Come on, d don't don't look this up. Please don't look this up. Skylanders Sparrow's Adventure for the PS4. I mean, look, there are a lot of crazy theories here, but anybody that tells you that this is true is just wrong. Imaginers was the first game in the timeline, so I've heard that some people say this, but it really does not make sense. This suggests that the timeline for Skylanders is Skylanders Imaginators, Spouse Adventure, Giant Swap Force, Trap Team, and Superchargers. Now, the timeline makes sense up until Trap Team. There is no way how Skylanders Imaginators can come before Trap Team. Now, if the first game in the timeline was Trap Team, then Imaginators, then everything else would probably make sense, but there's no logical way Imaginators can come before Trap Team in the timeline. Bootlegs. Oh yeah, there are probably a lot of Skylanders bootlegs that I don't even know about. Now, even though Disney Infinity and Amiibo and Lego Dimensions took inspiration from Skylanders, I don't think I'd call them bootlegs. All three of these games are very different games than Skylanders, and they just hopped on the Toy Story Life hype at, the, at that time. Now, let me show you some bootlegs. Now, that just looks like a cursed image. There are even more examples. I think I would even go on to say that Light Seekers is a bootleg of Skylanders. There are probably many more. I remember going to places like Walmart and seeing other Toys of Life characters that were not Skylanders or any other main ones like that. I guess those companies are just trying to make a quick buck. Skylander Boy and Girl Pedal Ring. Yeah, this is apparently a theory. I don't know. I mean, I don't know where this came from. I mean, I know the data was weird, but not this weird, right? Right? Well, thanks for having me, Scandal Gamer TV. This has been really fun. Uh, and a little bit weird as well. I know Crypt Crusher did get a bit weird at some points, but guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Go make sure you subscribe to Crypt Crusher. I mean, you probably already have. He's blowing up right now. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video of breaking down the Skyliners iceberg. And thank you guys for watching.